Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwall. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who is getting denials instead of apologies. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. No, we are not. Uh, We are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We are only here to offer our humble musings. So hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs on the incredibly rewarding, but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right. We're going to get right into today's letter. Our The letter comes from, wait, what? Whose pronouns are she, her, and they, them, (laughs) who is writing from the void. Dear Sam and Sierra, I, 29 years old, she, they, have been dating my partner, 28 years old, he, him, for almost a year. In a lot of ways, it's a great relationship. He is kind and playful and brings out the same in me, and we deeply enjoy life together. We talk regularly about the future and are taking things seriously. But we keep having the same conflict over and over again. Essentially, we remember things differently. By total coincidence, I'm sure, lol, the things we remember differently are always things my partner said that were hurtful to me. How can we repair or have accountability for what we don't even agree happened? At what point should I stop believing that my partner remembers it differently and start thinking he might be manipulative? The worst case was about four months ago. A friend saw my partner's profile on a dating app still. I confronted him about it, and his first response to me was that he, quote, couldn't remember a time when we said we were exclusive. That's absolutely not true. We were calling each other boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, and explicitly said we were only seeing each other. I told him that that day, and again when we discussed it later, but at that later conversation, he denied that he ever said it. He told me that he knew we were exclusive, would never have said otherwise, and just forgot to delete the apps. He said he was just people watching and not swiping or meeting up with other people, so it didn't seem like a violation at the time. That would could be a whole separate letter, but ultimately he did apologize and we decided to move forward. The flip-flopping of his story, though, stuck with me, and I started to notice it as a pattern. Every time he says something careless or disrespectful, which luckily isn't too often, he then denies it. Not my interpretation of what he said. I could understand us disagreeing on that level, but the literal words that he said. At one point, I told him, I feel like I'm losing my mind, and he said, maybe you are. Ouch. He later told me that he meant that as a joke, but it's not funny when I really feel like my partner is denying my reality. I want to have empathy for this. Maybe this kind of self-protective measure comes from difficult experiences with conflict or perfectionism, and I think we could work through that. Denial is almost an apology, right? It's a recognition that even if he genuinely doesn't remember saying it, he knows it's out of alignment with who he wants to be. But I also want real accountability. I want my partner to own up to what he says. I want us to have emotional safety with each other. I want to be able to trust him. But every time this happens, it just gets a little harder to. What can we do to bridge this divide? Or am I just getting played? All right, my darling, thank you for trusting us with this letter. Thank you for writing and for listening. This is a pickle. What am I going to say, Sam? (laughs) (laughs) This is a pickle. Oh, my God. I haven't said that in a minute. You have Thank you, Sam. Thank you for bringing me back to myself. That's what it is. Absolutely. Yes. This is a homecoming, Mm -hmm. really. (laughs) Yeah. It's nice that we have this relationship shorthand to to help us navigate this. Yes. (laughs) Uh, this is a briny, briny pickle. Um, and I'm really grateful that you wrote and were so eloquent in your letter describing this relationship dynamic because, and I, I hope this isn't like a spoiler alert, but this is like a, a really great example of the beginnings of gaslighting. Um, you know, this person, when often when we think about gaslighting, uh, Sam, can you give me a quick definition of gaslighting? Yeah. Gaslighting is an experience where somebody uh, denies your experience or denies reality in an effort to kind of control the situation and to keep you kind of like 
on your back foot, right? Where you're disoriented. You're like, wait, what's happening? And we're arguing about like what happened as opposed to like the consequences of what's happening, right? Like a total denial and, and even like a, a, you know, kind of what your partner even said, right? Like an implication or an explicit declaration that you're crazy, right? You're making this up. This isn't what happened. This isn't true. Why are you being like this? As opposed to taking any sort of accountability for how the thing made you feel or the fact that it even happened, right? Like just that sort of denial. The 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 phrase to gaslight um, or gaslighting comes from a 1938 play called Gaslight in which a husband attempts to drive his wife crazy by dimming the lights, which were powered by gas in their home. And he later denies that the light has changed when the wife points it out. So it's like, oh, my God, the lights are dimmer. And he's like, no, they're not. You're crazy. What are you talking about? And then he he dims them again. And she's like, they're getting they're getting dimmer. And he's like, no, they're not. What are you talking about? Um, so that's where the origin of the phrase comes from. Part, and I think it does a great, the play does a great job of illustrating the impacts of gaslighting, which is you feel crazy because you're questioning your reality, which is why I know this is exactly what is happening in your relationship because your letter literally says that verbatim, like I am questioning my reality. I feel crazy, right? So earlier I was saying, I'm really glad that you wrote this letter and described it in this way because when we hear about gaslighting a lot, we hear about it in super emotionally abusive or volatile relationships because it's often used as a really effective tool for controlling people's behavior. So people, you know, I've heard stories and read letters from our listeners of people being gaslit to stay in relationships in which they're being physically harmed, you know what I mean? And, uh, or they're being like psychologically tortured essentially because they, they are being told what they're experiencing experience is not true. And, and the gaslighting is happening in a way that is intentionally trying to keep that level of insecurity going. Sorry, this is a long winded way to say the example of gaslighting you have showed us in this letter. Why I appreciate it is because I feel like it's on the other side of the spectrum. It's like, it's like beginner gaslighting 101. It's like it's it might not be intentional gaslighting, even though it is exactly that. You know, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but I'm really grateful that you've illustrated this so well because it's gaslighting, I think. And this sort of behavior is a really slippery slope that it can start like this. It can start as a means to avoid uh, as a means to avoid the consequences of your actions, you know, to he's your boyfriend is avoiding you dumping him because you caught him on a, on a, a dating site, which is outside of the bounds of your agreed upon relationship. He's making you question your own reality and denying your experience to avoid the consequences of his actions. That's how gaslighting starts. But my darling, my dear, it can end on that other side of the spectrum that I described earlier, early. it's a slippery slope from denying accountability to intentional control and manipulation and with the intent to harm is what I'm trying to say. Um, we are going to dive into gaslighting a little bit more, talk about how you can stay rooted and grounded in your own reality Um, how you can have compassion for your boyfriend and see where this behavior is coming from and stemming from while also having compassion for yourself equally, if not more, because your reality is real. Um, But first, we're going to take a very quick break. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Um, Yeah, I want to just echo everything that Sierra said um, <clears throat> about sort of the what gaslighting looks like and and like this is this is it right um and you know we often talk about gaslighting as being like like Sierra said this terrible horrible thing that happens in really abusive relationships and also we can do it because we're not doing our own healing, right? Like we're not doing the work of sitting in the discomfort of people being mad at us. Right. So we just deny that some, that anything happened. Right. Like, and, and I appreciate that you're sort of looking at your partner and saying like, I have, 
I can understand why this might be happening, right? It might be that he's a perfectionist. It might be that, you know, he is really bad at conflict or gets like panicky about it or has maybe he's had like really bad experiences when where he's been like really punished for admitting that he did something wrong and feels like the need to deflect. And I think probably maybe all of those things are true, right? And I also want to say that like, just because we can understand why the behavior is happening doesn't mean that the behavior is acceptable because at no matter why he's doing this, what is happening is that you are writing to two strangers on the internet being like, I don't know if I can believe my own experience of this relationship anymore. Right. I, it feels like he's calling me crazy because he is explicitly calling you crazy. Right. He's, he's saying that out loud to you. And I don't want to say this in a way that's like, oh my God, run for the hills. Like this person is terrible. But I will say that like this behavior for me is like a big red flag that is like unacceptable. Right. And, and we, we have different, we have different ideas of relationships, right? Like, you know, this might be something that you want to sit with and work on with him and sort of call attention to. For me, it would be like a, a uh, no go. <laughs> it would be like, I can't have you telling me that I'm crazy or lying about conversations that we've had. Like, cause I've been in that situation, right? I have been in a relationship with somebody who did similar shit to this, who would constantly say, I never said that, who would constantly say, you said this, didn't you? And I'd be like, I, th those words never came out of my mouth, right? Like this, the, the way that I felt whenever we're, we, we were in conflict with each other was so disorienting and so harmful to me, right? I behaved in ways that were I didn't like because I was like, I was being driven crazy. <laughs> like, and I mean that in, like I was, my reality was being questioned and it made me feel so disoriented. It made me feel so insecure and unsafe that I behaved in ways in that relationship that I did not like about myself. And so I want to just like name that there are lots of ways in which our partners can be causing us harm that we can talk and address with them. It's really hard to do that if you can't even have a conversation about what actually happened in the situation, even when the conversations are days apart, right? Like it's, it's like the lie, the lie is so bald faced that like, Oh my God, I just want to slap him. No, absolutely. And being like the conversation that you had happened yesterday, how can you pretend <laughs> like you've misremembered it? Like I just, and again, like, I think this letter is like deeply triggering to me because I'm like right back in yeah. that relationship where I was, I'm just like, we talked about this four hours ago and you're telling me that you didn't say this thing that you said to me, right? Like uh -uh. it was just so unnerving. And so like, I want to, I want to say that and be like, this, w this is like a really big red flag for me because of my own experience. And I just like, I want to just say that like what you're feeling in this is really real, right? This like, how is this nice person, this person that I have so much fun with also like lying to me about my own experience is like, I get it. I get that it can be really disorienting to, to, to be so happy with this person in so many different ways. And also this, like this way of managing conflict poorly keeps coming up and there's nothing you can do about it. Cause you can't, if right. you don't, if you don't agree about what is happening, then there's no way that you can actually address or hold anyone accountable. And that's why for he's the doing it. it. And that's why he's doing it. Exactly. Yes. He's, he's right. To, to, to avoid the conflict and not just to avoid conflict. Like we can have compassion for someone and be like, why, you know, I, I've admitted on this show, I'm very conflict averse. Like I'm not great with conflict and we can have compassion for that and we can work on that. And also we can see how our coping mechanisms help us avoid the accountability of our actions or the consequences of our actions, yep, you know, yep, yep. Let's, I'm just going to, I'm going to restate this letter to you. Your boyfriend was caught on a dating app, which is against the bounds of your relationship. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I didn't know we were exclusive, even though you definitely were. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day and the next day he admitted that he did know you were exclusive. He did know you were exclusive and he went on those apps anyway to people watch. <laughs> Excuse me? Go to yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. park, my bro. Right? Like people watching is meant for the mall. Okay. It's not for an app that's meant for romantic or sexual connection. Right? Like 
that is against the balance of your relationship. Um, and I, I appreciate this example, like I said in the intro, because it is, it is where gaslighting is born, right? And I am grateful that your boyfriend is not gaslighting you to a more extreme level, but you're still, you still feel like you're going crazy. You, he's still, I don't know if he cheated on you, but he was on a dating app. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's still, he's still making you question your sense of security and reality enough that you're, that you are not holding on to the truth that you know. And the truth is he went on a dating app while he knew you were exclusive and he continually says things to you and then denies them later. And then calls you crazy. Sam and I have to, (laughs) and then calls you crazy. Come on, my bro. Um, (laughs) Sam and I have to like, this is the, I don't even want to say this because literally I, my whole life view is based on compassion, but this is the downfall of compassion. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's the downfall of shows like us ours, because <laughs> I really feel like I could look at someone who was like, I don't know, punching a kitten or something. And I'd be like, it's probably part of his childhood trauma or something like that. You know, like I could, the <laughs> compassion sure, sure, sure. in me uh-huh. could see why we do the fucked up things that we do. Right. The problem with that is that we get so good at exercising compassion and humanity for other people that we don't become equally exercised in giving ourselves the same compassion and humanity. Yeah. If you were working as hard as you were working at understanding his choices, if you were working that hard at justifying your own experience, that boy would be out the door and he'd be, he'd be banging at the door saying, please take me back. Because his consequences would then have real, his, excuse me, his actions would then have real consequences. Do you know what I mean? For sure. um, I love that you are looking at why he is gaslighting you. I love that because it's also, it's, it's educating to me, right? Like, okay, in my worst moments, like Sam said, that relationship he was in brought out the worst you know, behavior in you, right? Like when Mm -hmm. we are unstable, when we are threatened, when we are forced to face our own, you know, poor choices or our, our, our wounds, we often run and we, or we fight in weird ways. You know, we cling to things to save ourselves or whatever, save face. So I really appreciate how you're humanizing his choices to make you feel absolutely batshit. I do truly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And also, (laughs) and also where is that work for yourself? Like, where is Mm. that work for understanding why you are putting up with someone who constantly make you feel, makes you feel like you're questioning your own reality. Sam and I have to, have to address one sentence in your letter, particularly, which is (laughs) the sentence, Sam, would you like to? (laughs) No, go for it. it. Go for it. (laughs) (laughs) the sentence denial is almost an apology, right? You know, you were saying like he is denying it because he, it's a self-protective measure because he doesn't, he knows he fucked up, right? They are not the same thing. An apology is accountability and self-awareness. An apology is, is inherently uncomfortable. It is hard to admit when we fucked up, right? It's hard to admit when we hurt someone. That's why we do manipulative things like lie or deny someone's experience or whatever. But you don't want to be with somebody who can't do hard things, right? And who would rather make you feel like you're crazy than admitting maybe he shouldn't have gone on a fucking dating app when he's in an exclusive relationship. That is so simple to me. It's just like so simple. Like that's just, it's just like the, (laughs) like it's just, and the thing is, is that like, I just want to point out, like, look at the ways in which his behavior is already letting you settle for less than what you want or deserve in this relationship, right? The fact that he's unable or unwilling to to own up to things that actually happened is making you think, okay, well, a denial is basically an apology, right? Like 
if he is admitting that the thing that he, the, if he's admitting that what he supposedly did would have been out of alignment with what, who he is, then like, that's close enough that I can, I can live with that. Right. And like, again, this is like the slippery slope, the sort of like, what other things are you going to accept as the same when they're not right? Like what other things are you going to, are, is this behavior going to let you sacrifice because you don't want to have the same argument again, right? Because you don't right. want to have that conversation where you, where you leave it feeling like nothing constructive has happened and you're just doubting everything that has happened to you, right? Like that, this type of behavior is conflict avoidant for sure, but it also is designed to make you not want to engage in conflict with him, right? Like it's designed yes. to manipulate you away from accountability for him. And again, like we can have all the compassion in the world and say like, this may be a product of his like overbearing mother or whatever. But like th the reality is, is that the, 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 consequences of this behavior are really real, right? We can, we can say, I can understand why you're doing this. And also the impact that it has on me is really bad, right? Like it's unacceptable. Yes. And I, and I want to just make sure that like, that Sierra and I believe you about everything that you've said to us so far. And that we want to invite you into recognizing that like being in a relationship with somebody who is unable to handle conflict and also manages conflict in a way that denies your reality, that manipulates you into not bringing to him the things that have been happening to you is, is toxic behavior. Like it's just, it's not good stuff. And I hope to God that this man is able to figure out how to do this differently. Right? Like I really, people have the ability to learn and grow and, and I wish that for him. And I wish that he could practice self-awareness to be able to do that. I don't want you to have to do that because it's not going to work. Right? I don't, it, you are not going to be the one to be able to, to get him to behave differently because even coming to him with this question means that he's going to, deny your reality about it again. Right. I, I was he's going to say that never happened. That. <laughs> yeah. I was just picturing say like, like, you know, crazy. I was trying to, I was thinking about like, you know, do you walk around with a notebook and like write down exactly what he says? When you, you know? get into arguments, do you bring out your phone to record it? Right. Like I'm thinking, but it's like, no, that's not the solution. <laughs> like that's not the road that we want to go down. Exactly. In that level. Yeah. yeah. If you're like, dude, you've been gaslighting me. This is, you're making me question my reality and blah, blah, blah. You know, you're not, I'm, you're not allowing me to hold you accountable to your actions. Um, what is he going to say? Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, yeah, just, absolutely. You're going to be like, you called me crazy. Is, and he's going to be like, I never called you crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> right. Like that's, that is, that's how yeah. these types of things go when people aren't able to hold accountability for themselves. I'm not saying just break up, but I am saying this is such a red flag for me. This really rec would require such an extreme vulnerability on his end to be like, you're right. I'm avoiding conflict. I'm backing out of it because of these ways. I'm making you question yourself because of these things. Like it's going to be such an emotional investment for him to change this behavior that I do not, I do not feel confident that this is a safe and nurturing space for you to put mm -hmm. your energy in. Mm -hmm. I like, I feel fine telling people to just break up, you know, 90% of the time uh, when I feel really confident in it, but there's also this, there's this sadness that I know you're invested in this relationship. I know you mm -hmm. like this person yep. and they make you feel good. So I, I like, that is all in my heart as I'm saying, I don't know if this person is going to match the emotional energy and effort and maturity that you put into this relationship and in this dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can fucking convince a gaslighter to stop gaslighting you in the, in the moment, in the relationship. Somebody write in and tell us if they were like, and, and then, and I, I believe this has to have happened somewhere where you're with somebody and they break down their emotional walls enough and their baggage and their trauma and their fucking attachment styles and their communication styles and their conflict styles, you know, and they, and they, and they are, they commit enough to the emotional journey 
and the vulnerable journey of being truly known, you know, cause that's, that's what it is all about, right? Like, mm-hmm. is this dude ready to be truly known and accountable to his actions? Like, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. Write us. Doesn't... Write us. If your relationship started with a gaslighter <laughs> and you, you somehow grew through it, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, wait. Not that people what? can't grow. <laughs> Sorry. For sure. Not that people no, can't grow, but did you grow in the relationship with the gaslighter? Right. Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, all this to say, wait, what? Um, we're so sorry that, wait, what? that you're <laughs> we're in this in this predicament, right? And um, it's always really challenging when somebody that we know and somebody that we like and somebody that we feel really connected to also comes to us with behavior that's really unacceptable. Um, And it can be really hard to try and hold empathy for people and understanding, right? That this guy is a nice man, right? Like that he has fun with you, that you envision a future with him while also being confronted with behavior that is really harmful. Um, You know, Sierra and I can sort of sit here and talk about how easy it is to make these sort of discernments of what people's behavior is. And we also recognize that it's much harder when you are in it, right? And that there's all sorts of things that we might be missing about the relationship that you're in. Um, so I'm sorry that this is happening to you. And I'm sorry that that what seems like a really wonderful person otherwise is like being really toxic in this way. Um, and we hope that you know that we are sort of naming this really explicitly with the hopes of being clear about what we see as being really challenging about this. Not because we think that you're an idiot for dating this man or you are somehow like easily manipulated or any of that. Right. Cause Sierra and I have both been in situations with gaslighters, right? Like we absolutely I'm sure can I understand and empathize. I'm, I'm confident I'm 100% that I have. I'm sure that I have too. You know, let's talk about that. But <laughs> I think, uh, so all this to say that we know that this is hard um, and we know that it is really, really unfortunate that this is kind of how things are playing out. Um, and we just hope that you know that we see you and we hear you and we want the best for you. And we hope that you're able to figure out what is next in sort of navigating this really tricky situation. We love you so much. And you deserve a, a clear and genuine apology when you're Absolutely. hurt. You deserve that. Absolutely. Thank we you so much helps. for writing. We love you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you want more content from us, uh, or if you would like ad free episodes, you can always support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode. That's patreon.com slash just break up pod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at just break which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers, giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his music and podcast. And remember, you deserve someone who will show up to difficult conversations, who will show up to feeling vulnerable, who might feel defensive, but will still stick around for those hard hard moments in relationships that push you, that push your connection. You deserve that. You deserve someone who's willing to do the work alongside you. And if all else fails, just break up.